protesters in Hong Kong are not backing down this weekend, and they've turned out in the thousands, defying a ban on demonstrations to keep up their calls for justice. Today, they endured perhaps their biggest clash with authorities yet. Riot police are using tear gas and water cannons to disperse the crowds. We want to show you just a little bit of what it looks like from the ground. CBC's Adrian Arsenault, co-host of The National, has the latest from the streets of Hong Kong. So this is a rare and slightly odd pause in the night. The riot police here in Causeway Bay, some of them, if you can see this, uh, this officer's weapon here that says less lethal, uh, are waiting. They frankly have no idea where the protesters are going to turn up next, uh, what sort of trouble uh, might follow. Remember, this day started with people believing that the, the main peaceful protest planned for today had been cancelled. Uh, police and the authorities seemed certain that that would encourage people to stay away. The opposite seems to have happened. The streets were full for most of the day and, and the, the protesters move in a really organic way. They show up in, in one neighbourhood uh, close to, to the Legislative Council. Nothing happened for a while. It suddenly got very aggressive. Uh, tear gas, water cannons, uh, police using something we haven't seen before, which is blue dye being sprayed at people. It sort of marks people who, who were the protesters. And then as night fell, it, they sort of moved into different neighborhoods, each one having purpose. They went towards the, the police headquarters at one point. They went towards the Beijing liaison office. They, they said a seemed to set a vehicle on fire and then the riot police came at them very hard. We saw uh, a number of injuries, one in particular that looks pretty serious. And now it is the strange holding pattern as it gets later and later into the night where the riot police know they have to just keep chasing these protesters. The, the protesters have the advantage of being uh, leaderless. They always say that, that they're like water. Uh, they're very tech savvy. Some of them are telling us that they've been using Pokemon Go uh, and uh, as a way to sort of mark where the police are and, and where the water cannons are. And that's how they're communicating uh, with each other. Where this goes, this, you know, this is the question nobody seems to understand uh, how to answer. Be because when you talk to these young protesters, some of whom say they have filled out their wills uh, before coming onto these streets, they just feel like the Hong Kong government completely misreads the situation and seems to think it can just shut them up by telling them not to come to the streets and it's only making them angrier. They know there are a lot more resources that the Hong Kong government has. They, they can block social media, they can ban people from wearing masks, even gas masks in the street. It doesn't seem to deter the protesters at all. It certainly seems to make the riot police nervous. Here we go again, they're on the move once more. That's the CPC's Adrian Arsenault, co-host of The National in Hong Kong.